what we've been working through is um, iteration design, and that's really just getting an idea of everything around your customers, around the customer needs, and trying to identify like what are they trying to do as they move through the process, and what are they, um, how does your business fit into the whole landscape? How do you solve their problem? How are they currently solving their problems? Um, and, and all of this, as we said like right in the beginning, is around trying to identify risks in the business model. So how are you finding risks? What, are, what assumptions have you made in that? So as you write this stuff out, start thinking about questions like, is that really true, is that not? And the next step is to go out and kill those assumptions, because everything you've written down on the page is what you think. It's not, there's no real data or evidence to actually show otherwise. And the, the next step is really to move out into actually go and talk to customers. Go take this precious little idea of yours out of your head and throw it out in the big wide world and see what comes back. See what the customers say. Because that's where you're really gonna find out, is it really a problem, is it not? Do they want Whole Foods or is it more of a concern around their shacks that will be there when they get back from work? So we're going to unpack very quickly um, customer interviews um, and just give you a couple of scripts and, and a bit of an approach on how to do it. So the, the thing about customer interviews, you have to have an idea of who your customer, customer is to start with. And so as some people like it, it, it helps to flesh out personas and you, you build my customer is this type of person or that business, put a business in mind think that through, and it really helps to analyze what makes a customer a customer. Who, who are the types of people that have this problem? Why do they have that problem? Um, and so it's really good to map that out, but then ignore it. So in the very early days, have this idea of who your customer is, but intentionally go and speak to some people who you don't think are your customer, because they might also have this problem. Or they might have another problem that's just next to it, but kind of similar, that you can build one thing and solve both problems. Um, and then your customer segment, the way you define your customer becomes bigger. So customer, customer personas is great to try and get an idea of who it is, help you articulate, like, who am I going to go ask questions to? If you create a persona, it's, I need single moms between this age of this demographic, or I'm going to go to the mall, or I'm going to go here. You can find places to go find them. So personas is a great tool for that, but don't let personas limit you. Um, and then you want to, when you're initially talking to people, you're, you're out to collect information. You're trying to learn things that you don't know. You're trying to find out things that they have or that, that they feel or things that are important to them that you didn't think was important to them and you didn't know was a bigger priority than the problem you're trying to solve. So you want to try and collect um, as much information around them as possible. And, and if it's going well, um, like try and get some kind of personal information. Of can I get an email address or contact you or, or can we get a, a phone number? We'll let you know when we actually launch the service or when we're kind of doing it on that. And, but the one kicker, the one rule of the first time you talk to customers, the single rule is to try and not end open, open ended questions. And I'll get to that because that was the next slide. Um, is to try and op ask open ended questions. So don't ask a question that's going to be yes, no. And there's two different types of feedback you can get. You can get qualitative feedback and you get quantitative feedback. And what you're looking for in the beginning is qualitative feedback. You're looking for the, the insights, the nuggets, the, the information they're going to give you. And so you can't do that via a web form because it's, all, it's only a yes-no question. So that's, quant, that's, qualitative feedback. that's quantitative feedback when you go send a web form or get a thousand people online to answer your survey. But what you really want to do is you want to get qualitative feedback at back at this stage. Do you really have that problem? What's difficult about it? How can you ask open-ended questions that, that get the customer to talk about their experiences, talk about their issues? And um, so you want to try and avoid things that would you, like some questions that are classic of, of, of would you pay this for the service? Or would you, um, would you use a solution that helped you find a great hair, hairdresser? Sure I would. What have, what have you learned from that? Nothing. And so the real kicker of in the first, the first time you're talking to customers in the very early interviews you do, don't mention product. Take your product completely out of it. It's got nothing to do with your product. The first time you go out and talk to people, you're trying to identify what are their problems. How are they trying to solve that? And only later you can see does your product fill that hole for them. But you, if you try and go with your product in mind, you're going to ask questions that will lead into that question, that I've got a product that's this app that helps you find these people. Do you have a problem finding these people? That doesn't come, oh, yes, you've got an app for it, I must say yes. <laughs> so I, I, it seriously degenerates the quality of feedback you get in the beginning. Yeah, and in the playbook you'll find some links to advice. You'll hear this over and over again, but 
On the one hand, it messes up your customer, and on the other hand, it messes up you. Because when you think about your product, we said don't mention your product, don't even think about your product. Really just try to put it out of your mind and understand this customer. Because the second you think about your product, your confirmation bias is going to tie in what they're saying to this making you right. Uh, and that is a horrible thing and it's dangerous. And there's a whole bunch of other biases that kick in when you've got your product in mind that your brain is going to try to make you right and, and link in with that. So yeah. in the beginning, it's this inquisitive, expect the unexpected so learning phase. You're specifically not talking about product and don't ask about product. Okay, so sorry, you said ask anyone, like anyone? So if your talk your product is let's say uh, yeah, it's gender specific, like pads, and sure. why would you talk to guys about the whole so, so, so then, then a really great, um, a, a, the really great limitation of that for a startup is time and money, right? So you don't have time to go and talk to a thousand people. You're only going to talk to twenty, mm -hmm. maybe fifty if you're good. What um, product did you mention? Pads. <laughs> sanitary pads. So it's quite a problem as a guy buying sanitary pads for your girl, right? Yeah. Isn't it? As for, a guy, like, for a guy. If you ask, if you ask oh, someone yeah, yeah. like, as a husband, like. How does that go? You might find a vertical there, and it's easier to buy because you know how do you choose? So literally anyone. Anyway. The person in the lift, like what's happening? Like just like be inquisitive. <laughs> you know? It's like well, I, 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 asking, asking a husband where she buys her pants from is really good insight to say like, does she hide it from him? Does does it not like like is is there, are there are there are there societal issues or relationship issues that that you need to take into account when you're trying to market this? Um, is there a way that you can break down those stigmas? Like, what is it around this area, this problem that we're looking at addressing? So you really just try and catch. So, so if you if that is your product, yes, I would primarily go talk to women. But but you can you know, learn some really interesting stuff by asking the guys the questions too. <laughs> There's a case study with like Old Spice, the, the shower yeah, yeah. gel, where they ended up targeting the added women because they found out that even though it's a men's <coughs> shower gel, the woman uh -huh. in the house. Yeah. Like Why do you think I have a half naked guy like playing drums with his pants? It's like that's not aimed at me, I can tell you that. We <laughs> find something like that out. Yeah. 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 That's actually true. Go ahead. There was a business that was, it was on top billing, a lady who started the business, a beard grooming business, because she had issues because her husband wanted to grow his beard and it was too itchy, and so she wanted natural products and whatever. Um, so she was doing from the point of not him, but from the female point of view of your husband has a beard. Yeah. Husband yeah. Husband a I see this. Okay. Yeah, but it's like, it's so like if you're looking for a gift, who's going to buy it? The husband's not going to go like, I'm a manly man, I'm not going to no. groom my beard. But if the wife <laughs> buys it for him, it's like, oh wow, this is really nice. <laughs> <laughs> so you're actually targeting at the, at the woman, not the men. And in the 90s, like, auto manufacturers had the realization that it was the twins that were making the big decisions about what cars got bought in the family. Sure. Yeah, but they were the major influences because the parents sort of were making the kids happy. But it's the tweens, the 12, 13, 14, that age group. <laughs> be prepared to be surprised. Like, who makes the decision, like the husband or the wife? But it's the kids, actually. Yeah. So you're not going to be. You're not going to be. You're not going to be surprised that unexpected if you're only talking to the people you expect are going to give you the right answer. Yeah. So in the early days, talk to more people. Get out there. This is one of the best customer interview scripts that we've come across. It's really simple, really open-ended, and works with any product. Um, it should be in the in the lean. It's in the manual. If it's not, the, we, we're continually updating and improving the the playbook as well. If you go to leaniterator.com, you can see a virtual version and download it as well. There's some stuff. All the links, are obviously, hyperlinks there, which helps too. This is um, also, but, on, uh, how I interview that customers link. Which is in the book. Yeah, so there's the, that, that link is in the book um, on the bottom. But it really starts with a, like the most open ended questions like, what's the hardest part about X? So, what's the hardest part about procuring safety gear for a business? Or, what's the hardest part around identifying, like, finding platforms to discuss women's issues or uh, issues relating to black women? Like, where do you go to find that? What's, what's difficult about it? What's hard? That's a really open-ended question that's going to get some really interesting insights. Can you tell me about the last time that happened? Where did you go? What did you do? Where did you try look? The last time the problem happened or the last time it did? Right? So, so the last time, what is the hardest part about your problem context? So what is the hardest part about having your haircut? Finding my barber. 
Cool. I so, what happened last time you did that? He was unavailable, and the girl cut my hair. It was just a bit too deep. Sure. And, and, and why was that hard? It's because he cut your hair and he went a little too deep. Just, right. So, what if, what if, if anything, um, have you done to solve that problem? Like, how are you getting around that? I had to let my hair grow out. Okay. But now you make sure that you go to a reliable person, right? And you go to the same guy every time. Yeah. Okay. And so, what do you love about the what solution you, you tried? Like, what don't you love? About about that, like what is what are the what is about that experience of having your hair cut at this guy who did it wrong? What is the worst part about that? What did you not? He literally owns my life. <laughs> Besides, he's not cutting my hair. Cool. So you feel very disempowered. Yes. That's a really. I would not assume that someone would feel disempowered around their hair. Cut. Oh, I do. <laughs> no, but but that's a really great insight. And, and so only when you asking these open-ended conversational questions will you start finding some really interesting things around the context of the problem that you're trying to solve.